Trigger warnings are intended to protect people's mental health, but could they actually be causing harm? What does the data say? Stay tuned. Trigger warning. Today, we're talking about trigger warnings. Trigger warnings are intended to protect people from content they may find disturbing or unsettling. If you're the survivor of a trauma of some kind, you might find it jarring and uncomfortable to be reminded of your trauma randomly during an online video, an article, or in a college classroom that discusses that topic. A trigger warning can give you a chance to steal yourself before the content or make an informed choice about whether you want to participate in that content altogether. However, some critics have argued that they prevent people from addressing difficult but important issues. Now, like everything these days, the idea of trigger warnings has been politicized, which has probably helped form almost everyone's views about trigger warnings, at least here in the US. But here on Psy vs. Psy, we care about what works. We want to live in a world where we try things, observe the outcomes, and use that data to make decisions about how to best support human thriving. So forget about what your disgruntled uncle said about it on Facebook. What does the science say about trigger warnings? Do they protect the mental health of people who've experienced traumas? Are they ineffective or worse? Do they have the potential for harm? Trigger warnings are everywhere these days, but they're still a relatively recent phenomenon. I did a Google Trends search and it looks like the term really started to take off around 2014, but came into its own between 2016 and 2019. That means the research on all this is relatively new. I was surprised to see that the scholarly literature has a lot of published work, but it really falls into three categories. The first and largest category is people making academic arguments about the merits and disadvantages of trigger warnings. And while people in these categories make some great points, I'm sure, this is not scientific work, and more importantly, it doesn't answer our questions about whether or not they're effective or not. The second largest category is science-ish, in that it measures people's attitudes and opinions about trigger warnings. Do people like them? Do they use them? Do they think they're useful? Uh, again, this is examining people's opinions, and while this can be useful for some things, it doesn't tell us whether or not they do what they are intended to do. Now finally, the smallest category is the one that we want, a handful of studies that attempt to look at the outcomes following trigger warnings. Now, before I get into some studies, a couple of intuitive thoughts caused me to have some doubts about whether trigger warnings would be effective. Uh, first, my background is in learning, and I worry about stuff like classical conditioning. By hearing the words trigger warning before you hear about something that is traumatic, those words become a reliable predictor of the trauma activation and could actually lead to fear conditioning. If that's the case, the words trigger warning themselves could become triggering, which would be the opposite of what you want. Now, furthermore, since you hear trigger warning for lots of topics, including ones that may not be traumatic for you, you're going to have more trauma from just hearing the warning all the time than you would if we just didn't bother. Also, we seem to apply these warnings to all kinds of issues that people may find controversial or upsetting, but they may not have clinical significance. That is, they don't have PTSD or some other kind of disorder that would warrant this kind of intervention. And studies of PTSD are pretty clear that avoiding triggers actually prolongs PTSD symptoms rather than helping get rid of them. Trigger warnings have also been compared to other media warning systems like movie and TV rating systems. Some studies have shown that warnings about violence actually increase the appeal of the program. Whenever the news says something like, viewers may find this content disturbing, viewer discretion is advised. I tend to think, I'll be the judge of that. But I'm also open-minded and people are complicated and trauma is, well, traumatic. There are things that I don't want to be blindsided by on a Tuesday afternoon. And what other way would you warn someone other than, well, warning them? So let's see how some people have approached this problem scientifically. As usual, I'll have some citations and links to further reading in the video description down below. And that's also really close to the like and subscribe buttons. Just mentioning that. The first study I found was from 2018, which makes sense because this kind of research takes time. You've got to find funding, conduct the experiments, and then it takes time to write the manuscript and go through peer review, and the publishing process can take years. So this group was quick to start researching this topic. So Gainsbourg and Earl looked at three main questions. First, do people use trigger warnings to change their behavior in the first place? 
They asked a bunch of questions about people's views of trigger warnings, what they do when they see one, their political orientation, and so on. They found that after given the warning, some people had more anxiety about the target content and expressed more intentions to avoid it. Now I say some people because this seemed to depend somewhat on people's views about trigger warnings. That is, whether they were there to protect people or whether they were actually just coddling people. In a second experiment, they confirmed this result with a new, larger sample. In this experiment, participants were shown two movie titles, one of which had a trigger warning attached, and then they were asked to rate their anxiety about watching each video. Again, individuals who believed in the protective value of trigger warnings anticipated more anxiety for the trigger warning video than they did for the control video title. In a third experiment, participants read essays with a trigger warning, and they not only had to say how much anxiety they expected, they had to rate how much they experienced while reading an actual essay about domestic violence. Oddly enough, the results showed that the people who value trigger warnings the most were not helped by them when they consumed the content. They expected negative emotions, and they reported experiencing negative emotions. For those who viewed trigger warnings as coddling, putting a trigger warning in front of the content made it less distressing. So this is an odd result. Putting a trigger warning reduces anxiety while consuming the content, but only if you think trigger warnings are useless? <laughs> Fascinating. The next study I found was Sanson, Strange, and Gary from 2019. They did a great job of outlining reasons why trigger warnings might increase distress and why they might decrease distress. So I recommend checking it out if you want a deeper dive. They conducted six experiments manipulating presence or absence of trigger warnings and the intensity of negative content. Now, a lot of people think you do one experiment and publish one paper, but it's actually rare to publish an experiment by itself in psychology. In their studies, they found that overall, the negativity of the content, feelings about the content, and comprehension of the content were the same whether or not people saw trigger warnings or not. What little evidence they did find for trigger warnings as being helpful were so small they were not practically significant or worth worrying about. The next study, Brislin et al. 2019, conducted five experiments with 1,600 participants. This time they gave warnings before viewing a set of ambiguous photos that could be interpreted in multiple ways. They found that trigger warnings didn't cause people to view the images more negatively, but it did cause people to have more anxiety before viewing the photos. So they didn't do anything to help with the emotion regulation, but they did cause negative emotions before viewing the content. Another study, Belay et al. 2020, replicated a previous study from Belay in 2018, and they found, quote, trigger warnings do not appear to be helpful for college students, and if anything, cause small, temporary increases in anxiety. The same group of researchers wondered if perhaps the key is to target trauma survivors. Maybe that's the group we should be most concerned about and would benefit the most from something like a trigger warning. Some of the above studies did explore trauma history in their samples and didn't find anything useful, but they also didn't go out of their way to recruit people with trauma histories. So Jones, Belay, and McNally 2020 recruited 451 trauma survivors and gave them trigger warnings or no trigger warning before exposing them to content. Now some of this content matched their specific trauma history. They found no benefits of trigger warnings, but in fact found that trigger warnings might actually be harmful, since warnings reinforced the view that the trauma was central to that survivor's identity. Studies show that this belief intensifies and prolongs PTSD symptoms. And this is counter to what you want in therapy. The most effective message is that your trauma doesn't define who you are. Finally, another study by Bridgeland in 2022 may illustrate why trigger warnings don't help much. They had people imagine what they would do when they came across a warning related to their most stressful experience or thought about the actual experience itself. They found no differences in coping strategies or levels of anxiety between these two groups. Perhaps trigger warnings don't help because they don't activate coping skills. They tell you something bad is coming, but they don't give you any tools to help you deal with it. So when I started this video, I was genuinely curious about whether trigger warnings were helpful, whether I should use them or not. But as we've seen, the studies we have so far, which have tested thousands of participants, have shown that they aren't effective at reducing negative emotions. While there is some evidence that they may contribute to increased anxiety for people in general and prolonged PTSD symptoms for trauma survivors, the general takeaway I'm getting from them is that they might not be worth the effort. 
My one criticism of these studies that I think still needs to be addressed is this. What about cases where trigger warnings are used to avoid the content altogether? While it may not influence the content itself once you watch it, maybe you don't want to spend an hour in a classroom unraveling the sociological implications of insert your trauma topic here, when well, you have to go leave that classroom and go back and deal with that situation at home. None of these studies I found looked at whether there are benefits of avoiding triggering content outright. While this would be hard to study, I think it's still a potential argument for the usefulness of trigger warnings. Now this is where you come in. You could be the researcher who unravels this problem. You could be the one who helps people activate coping strategies for their traumas. We need people like you to tackle important questions to make our world a better place. Did I miss an important study on this topic? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. Subscribe to get more videos on all things psychology. And until next time, keep thinking. Trigger warning, some viewers may find the jokes at the end of these videos kind of lame. The memes are fire though. <laughs>